Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call to order the uh, August 22nd, 2017 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. I am the acting chair this evening, uh, subbing for, for our chair, Josh, Car Josh Carver, who has uh, another commitment. Um, I'll first call the meeting to order. We, uh, on the agenda, we have the approval of the minutes of May 23rd, June 27th, and July 25th. My understanding is that because we do not have a quorum from any of those particular meetings, we will table those until further notice to the next meeting. Um, as far as old business goes, I think we have none, as the agenda states. And so we move on to uh, agenda item F, which is to hear the request of Joanne Mills was a purchase and sale agreement with the owner of 5 Dean Way, map U18, lot 30, to add an accessory dwelling unit to the property based on section 1975 of the of our Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. And I, I would turn to our um, code enforcement officer, uh, Ben McDougal, McDougal, to offer any comments on that. Sure, uh, not too many comments on this one. Uh, they came to me with an interest in the property in the form of a purchase and sale agreement. And in order uh, in order for the property to work for them, they need to be able to add an accessory dwelling unit to the property. So I've been working with them for a few weeks to try to get this application together. I, I apologize, the application came in a little bit piecemeal here, but with a purchase and sale agreement on the property, they uh, were under time constraints, really needed to make this meeting um, and uh, you know, had a draft person and a surveyor working to get their information in, and some of it didn't come in quite for the first deadline, but it's all here. And I know we got the, uh, the, the bulk of the application via delivery, and then uh, there were some pieces that we received a little bit later as far as the, uh, the, the uh, elevation plans, I think, which helped to fund the project, which is helpful. Yep, those elevation plans, uh, came in yesterday and uh, in the survey plan is the last thing that I handed you, the survey and proposed site plan. Well then we would turn it over to the applicants, to uh, Joanne Mills and her representatives. Thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you. And uh, Ben also want to say thank you to you. You are correct that the uh, time constraints at play here underlie the uh, somewhat disjointed and incremental submission of these materials. So we appreciate your uh, flexibility in that regard very much and your assistance as well. My name is Patrick Ben. I'm an attorney representing uh, Joanne Mills. Ms. Mills is presently a resident of New Hampshire. Uh, she does have a purchase and sale contract for the property located at 5 Dean Way, which would demonstrate there's sufficient or requisite right title and interest necessary to confer upon her standing to apply. Um, as Mr. McDougall indicated, the intent here is simply to do a very low impact accessory dwelling unit, which would be reviewed under your Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance Section 9, 1955 and 1975 for both the ADU and the general conditional use. Uh, permit regulations. So with that being said, uh, just by way of overview, um, another point that I wanted to make is that uh, Ms. Mills would intend to occupy this uh, accessory unit with her daughter, uh, essentially cohabitating in the primary unit, which is another requirement of your ordinance. Um, we believe that on the basis of the application, which sets forth the standard conditional use uh, permit requirements under 1955 that we have demonstrated by substantial evidence that we have complied with those requirements. And we believe that you have uh, the information that you need to, to draw that uh, conclusion of law. Um, and in addition to that, I guess what I would propose is to go down one by one through the separate requirements itemized in 1975. Uh, taking them one at a time, there's eight. The first one is that the lot size needs to be at least 20, excuse me, 12,000 square feet. As you'll see on the survey in your possession, it is well over that, it's 16,000 square feet. The existing square footage of the house has to be at least 1,500 square feet. As you'll see on the plans we've submitted, it's over 2,000 square feet. 
Number three is that the accessory unit can be no more than 25% of the new square feet, excluding the garage. The new building would be 2,695 feet without the garage. The proposed accessory unit would be 600 square feet, which is under 25% of that figure. Number four is that the addition to the floor area necessary to create the accessory unit may be no more than 15% of the existing floor area. Here, I think it's important to note that the ordinance does not exclude the garage and the definition of the existing floor area. So what we've done is tally up the total of the existing floor area. And again, this is presented on the plans that you have in your possession, excuse me. And so we take the, we take the floor area, which is quote unquote necessary to create the accessory unit. And that comes out to the difference or the delta between the two is 301 square feet which is, I believe, 13 and change percent. Number five is parking. At least one new space will be provided in the garage. There's also a driveway at this site. Number six is that the structure preserves or must preserve the existing single family character. As you can see in the elevations that we've presented, it will do just that. Uh, we're essentially proposing a, a very minor bump out of the footprint with a new garage. We're not drastically altering the character or the substance of this structure. Uh, number seven relates to home occupations. There are none, nor are there any planned. And number eight essentially, as I interpret it, is a ban on condominium ownership, and we're not planning any condominiumization of this property. Happy to answer any further questions. Just one, in, in terms of the, the percentage that you've uh, calculated here at 13.26%, uh, I notice you've excluded also the uh, utility room from that calculation. That's right. But it's true, though, that if you add the utility room back in, you're still under the 15%. It comes to 14.9%. Is that correct? I hope so. <laughs> that may very well be the case. I haven't confirmed that. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi there. Um, could you talk a little bit about the the layout of the existing house and the proposed changes to the floor plan? Um, where where the accessory unit will be? Will it be first floor? Will it be second floor? That Sure, that yeah, sort of thing. absolutely. So and I'm looking at the, I've, just so you know, we've got a lower level existing plan. Mm -hmm. um, front elevation exists. But I think that's it. We don't have a front elevation pr proposed, left elevation proposed. So in it is a little confusing. Yeah. On, the, on the second page of the original packet that you received, is lower level proposed. Okay. So if you compare lower level proposed with lower level existing, okay, it was in this the, the other packet. Yeah. Now I see it. You, you, you can see that they're converting the garage into a bedroom and then extending. So that this is all occurring on the lower level. There's no proposed changes to the upper level, which the, the upper level currently has the kitchen, living room, bedroom arrangement. I, I noticed the utility room is pretty big. Is that, is that just because the space isn't needed and it'll be used for storage or that sort of thing, I assume. Yeah, I, I think the intent there was really just to have it serve as a more spacious amenity, you know, room house utilities, and those are better to have in a spacious room. Okay. Possible uh, washer dryer. You'd have a little more room for the laundry, right? So we're just receiving the the site plan. Um, so we haven't. 
haven't really had much time to review it, but <clears throat> can you comment on the so I see this, the setbacks, building setbacks in this zone are 30 feet at the front and 30 feet at the side and rear. The, uh, and it appears sorry. that the existing house is not 30 feet from the front property line and the, the proposed garage encroaches even further into that setback. The, this, the setback is actually 25 feet okay. because of uh, the non-conforming section of the ordinance reduces the setback for non-conforming lots. I find that most surveyors put conforming setbacks on survey plans. Okay. Thank you. So, in fact, the existing house and the proposed addition all meet the are more than 25 feet from the front property lines. So yeah, that makes sense. The whole, the existing structure is conforming and the proposed would be conforming. Can you comment on the, the existing um, septic field? Or I, there is a septic system, an on-site septic? That's right. It's a 10,000 gallon per day design flow uh, based on the inspection that we had conducted. Uh, and I spoke to Mr. McDougall about this as well. And so the presumption is that since this is an existing permitted house uh, with four bedrooms in it, then at least the minimum of 90 gallons per day design flow would have to be assumed to exist for those four units. So it would have to be at least to come up to 360, but our inspection represents that it's 10,000. We're, we talked a bit about the septic and there's a, there's a couple ways we can go with it. It, it is, uh, it's a legal four bedroom house with, with a legal septic system. When you go from a four bedroom house to a three bedroom house and a one bedroom apartment, it's a slight increase in design flow. You go from 360 to 390 gallons per day. Uh, there's two options to deal with that and they haven't chosen which one yet. They only need three bedrooms out of the four because uh, it'll be Ms. Mel's, her daughter, and then my understanding is occasionally your granddaughter may stay there. So really the, the, they're going to regularly use two of the bedrooms, a third may be used from time to time. So the question is, do they abandon the fourth bedroom and then they're over designed for their septic system? or there's also an administrative procedure to go through with, uh, with a site evaluator to design a new design but not install it in the ground. Right. So they could either go through an administrative procedure to expand the system or uh, simply turn one of the bedrooms into uh, a den. So e either of those remedies would work and you know that'd be something we'd work out in the permitting phase. And okay. Be a so I, I will approve those not well, you're required to find that there's adequate septic capacity, and there is, I think. Mr. Van could, could testify that they're going to go with one of those two options, okay. both of which demonstrate adequate capacity. And, and they would be required to come back before us if there were some issue that you would need to the existing Correct. Okay. And, and I'm for, for any building permit or certificate, certificate of occupancy, I'm required to review for septic capacity as well. So sort of multiple layers of review for septic capacity. But they, they're, they're willing to go with one of those two options. Yeah, that's right. Just to follow up on that, to the extent we need to do so tonight, we're happy to you know, transform this into a, essentially a three bedroom, you know, two existing and, and one accessory unit. Uh, in fact, that mirrors how it's being used today. And then at the time of resale for property value increases, we could come in and, and uh, turn it back into a four bedroom if we needed to. Uh, or we could, we'd be happy with a condition of approval that says we'll work it out with Mr. McDougall. It's up to the board. Any additional questions for the applicant at this moment? I had a follow up question, but I need a clarification from Ben as to the point that was raised by Mike. Um, can we just 
talk about the setback, and then if there's no issue there, then I have no question to the applicant. Um, I'm looking on page um, 56 to 60 of the code, and this is the space evolved standards uh, portion of the code that deals with setbacks for the RA district. And then on page 60, it looks like the front yard setback. Now, there was a discussion about 25 feet, 30 feet in non conformance issue. Is this not, is this the correct section? If it's not the correct section, let me know. And then just point, uh, briefly point to us to the section that you're talking about the non conformance use. Sure. That section is 19.43, and you go specifically to page 35. To the, to the table on page 35. You are in the correct section. We are in the RA zone, so that section is correct, but then this section allows them to be closer based on the fact that they're not conforming. Based on the fact that the, the lot is not conforming. Is it, so, On page 34, I just want to understand the point that we're looking at. Um, you're not looking at the vacant non-conforming lot section on, on page Correct. 34. Correct. You're looking at page? On the, yeah, on the following page for developed non-conforming lots, it also points us back to back that to chart. Table. So that would be 1943A2 on page 36. Right? Yes. That's the authority that allows us to get away from that other section. Exactly. Okay. And right the last sentence yep. there, it points us to the okay. table. I have no questions. I've got a little, I've got a follow up actually. <coughs> uh, so if we look at the, the setbacks for, for the zone, uh, it, it talks about the front yard setback. Uh, may be reduced to the average setbacks of the two principal structures fronting on the same road in closest proximity. We're not using that provision. That we, we, we do, we use that provision uh, from, from time to time if the average of the two abutters is closer to the road, but we aren't depending on that provision here. Okay. Because they, they can use the they table. Use the okay. So we, we didn't need to look at the abutters for that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any additional questions for the applicant? Uh, or just whether, whether or not we need bins to put on it. Any further? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Any comment from members of the public and of others? And Ben, did we receive any comments via email or otherwise? I did not. Okay. So hearing nothing further, I would then close the meeting to public comment. Somebody's jumping up and down. Oh, they are. Okay. And we can engage in, in our discussion then as a, as a board. Comments from the board. Well, I'll start it off, Mike. Uh, Thank you. Basically, if you if you look at all the information that the applicant has provided and the discussion that Mr. Ben further provided, it appears to me that uh, the applicant has met the standards of 195-5D, uh, as well as the requirements for the creation of an accessory dwelling unit pursuant to section 1975B. And uh, I won't go through the listing of all of those. Uh, again, I think we've, we've gotten that in the applicant's information as well as in the discussion. But it appears that those requirements and standards have been met. And that being the case, uh, I would move to approve this request for a conditional use permit.
to uh, approve the request of Joanne Mails for the purchase and sales agreement with the owner of 5 Dean Way Mall, uh, map U18, lot 30, to add an accessory dwelling unit to the property based on section 1975 of the zoning ordinance. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Uh, discussion. Yeah, I've got a <coughs> point of discussion, and it has to do with the finding that uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary, unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal. disposal. And it's just back to the, mm -hmm. the point that Ben discussed about the capacity sure. of the existing septic system isn't necessarily designed for three bedrooms plus an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, I'm happy to have them work it out with Ben. I thought both both of the options that you um, suggested, uh, I wouldn't have a problem with either, but I think as a board, I think maybe we should condition it upon that being resolved through that. That's my two cents. And Otherwise, was, fine with it. And that was point. It's uh, it's the it's a requirement under Section 1975B. Uh, sorry, I'm struggling to find it now. Or, or maybe it was under. Uh, is it 1955? Under the conditional use. Yeah, that, that could Thank be addressed, you know, with a simple condition yeah. on yeah. the findings. Right, okay. So a friendly amendment with the condition that uh, the application, uh, the, the project apply with 1955B. Is that right? I'll, I'll verify it. It's determined by the code enforcement officer. D nineteen five five D three D is in David D three nineteen five five D three speak to be needed through the code enforcement office as determined by the code enforcement officer. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. So friendly amendment to the motion. A second. Any further discussion on the uh, amended motion? Okay. All in favor? That's unanimous. So we'll forward with the findings of fact, then the proposed findings of fact. Um, this is a uh, finding one. This is a request for a conditional use permit to create to create an accessory dwelling unit in an existing single family dwelling per section 1975, 19-7-5 uh, of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is 5 Dean Way, map U18, lot 30. The applicant is Joanne Mills, who has a purchase and sale agreement with legal owners, John and Karen Day. Uh, additional findings of fact, additional finding one, the proposed use will not create Hazardous traffic conditions when adding to when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Additional finding two: the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of uh, sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its, its design and operation. Additional, additional finding three: the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Additional finding four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Additional finding five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. And additional finding six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with requirements in section 19-7-5.B of the zoning ordinance. And then we have one additional proposed finding. Next section could be condition. 
the applicant shall demonstrate compliance with section 1955D3 as determined by the code enforcement officer. Okay, and I think that was consistent with our motion, right? Yeah. Sound right? Um, I'd seek a motion to approve the findings of fact as, as read into the record. So moved. Second. Second. Great. Discussion. All, all in favor then? Any opposition? Great. Okay. Well then, we have uh, approved your application. Thank you for coming before us this evening. Uh, I think that is the extent of our business this evening. So I would seek a motion to adjourn. I don't think we need to do that. Yeah, so there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.